Hello and welcome back to another Writerly Witterings with a cup of coffee at my side because it's cold weather. Anyway, as you will know if you've watched my videos, I really like a lot of different pens. One of my favourites is my old Visconti, the original Homo Sapiens Bronze which is a lovely pen to use. It's got a fantastic palladium nib. I just adore it. It's got a good clip. It's got a lovely quick action because it's just a bayonet fit and it's magnificent. I loved it so much that when I decided I was going to try a different project, I spoke to the man behind these wonderful pens called Dante Del Vecchio at Visconti in Florence. And he was interested in the idea of working with a writer. So he invented this for me. And it wasn't on sale anywhere, it was just a one-off for me, which is another very marvellous Homo Sapiens pen, but this time with a dual reservoir. And he called it the dual power filler, I believe. There's a slot in the side so you could see how much ink was in there, which was really useful. And in fact, it was such a neat, sensible idea that after a while, Visconti produced this, which is the Skylight, which is basically what my prototype was about. Lovely pens, I adore them, and I've never had a complaint about Visconti. But Dante has moved on. Dante is now the lead man behind Pineda and their pens, which means he obviously sought to redesign some of the aspects of his pens to simplify them, make them more efficient, and as a result, welcome to the Pineda Avatar Traveller, which is just fantastic. Now I will apologise very quickly because this is now, I think, the sixth attempt at recording this video. I have had an inordinate amount of uh, bloopers and issues. Not because of anything to do with the pen, purely because of my own incompetence. But it all adds to the fun of life, doesn't it? So, this is the Avatar Traveller. And it's using a new system of twin reservoir, which Dante is calling the Two Tank Touchdown, Triple T which I think is rather neat. So let's have a look at the pen. I'm going to tell you a bit about it. I'm going to explain how it works and then I'm going to say what I like and dislike about it. So, as a design, simple blue swirled acrylic on the very top, on the cap and the <coughs> blind cap at the bottom and then also on the section. The cap itself he says, putting the pen carefully down like that, is rather lovely. It's got the Pineda designed clip, which is a mechanical clip. There's a spring inside here and it grips very nicely to my shirt. I've not had any problems with it trying to fall out or anything. It says here on the band that it's Pineda made in Italy and then it has this wonderful very simple but skyline of Florence, Firenze, which is where Dante del Vecchio works and I believe where Pineda are based. So I like that. It's quite simple but it's nice with this white metal. So that is the cap. The cap connects to the pen with one of Dante's favourite things and definitely one of mine which is a magnet. So it just clips on really quite firmly and deliciously. So it's very quick and easy to get the cap off, post it if you want, write some quick notes and then pen away again. Very nice, very simple, love it. So what else can we say? The main barrel is clear plastic as you can see. And at the top on the cap, we have this lock padlock mechan me 
padlock symbol and unlock symbol with a little silver dot. That's the filling mechanism. Dante made this specially for me. I am inordinately grateful to him. One thing that I am most grateful for is this fabulous nib. It's a fully flex nib in gold. 14 karat gold and it is quite magnificent. It's fabulous to use. Now let's just look at the mechanism before we go into the nib any further. This is very similar to the Visconti dual power filler reservoir systems but it's enhanced. Instead of having a long slow laborious process of unscrewing the end you just twist it that brief turn and then the spring inside pushes the end cap up. It's a bayonet fit, you can see the bayonet fittings there, there are three cutouts, one, two, three. And when it's released you can pull back here and a rod comes out and you can see this piston being pulled out. Now, how does that work? Well, it's the same as the Visconti's. I'm just going to put this over my hand because there has been some ink in this today and I don't want to squirt it all over my hands, which I have done three times in previous attempts at demonstrating. So, when you want to fill the pen, all you do is you pull out the end cap, you dunk the bottle into your bottle of ink quite vertically. You can't have it horizontally because that doesn't work quite so well. But you push it in vertically, press this plunger down and what happens is, if I push it down a little way you can see, as you push down it creates a vacuum behind it. When you get to the bottom, what is a parallel sided cylinder here flares out and when you hit the flare the vacuum is released and it the pen just sucks ink up naturally. It is so simple and such a glorious design to use. So let's just show you that. If I push it all the way down and then you'll hear a... and you saw no doubt the watery ink being pulled up there. Now, why is that a good system? The reason why, for me, as a writer, is I want to have a pen that has as much ink in it as possible. If you have a cartridge converter pen, take this as an example, my Drake. I love my Drake, it's a wonderful pen, it has a fabulous nib. But that cartridge converter, when I weighed this on my scales a few minutes ago, it was 10 grams. I filled it with ink, and it was still 10 grams. So there's less than a cc of ink in there. A lot less. I think it's about a quarter of a cc. And my digital scales don't work that well. They're not that precise. It's only a set of cooking scales after all. This, however, has two reservoirs. There is one below here, that clear plastic between the um, silver ring there and the black disc there. In there is a small reservoir which is about one quarter of a standard ink cartridge that you get with a, a pen such as my Drake. But this section here is massive. That's the equivalent of about six ink cartridges. Six standard universal ink cartridges. It is a vast amount of ink to have in a pen. Now, I haven't been able to measure it precisely, but what I can say is that the total ink in there is probably about 3 cc's because I've tried to measure it by sucking up ink from a graduated measuring device and it seems to be between 2 and 3 quarter and 3 cc's which is vast. That is going to keep you writing for a very long time. Okay, so we have the two reservoirs. What is useful is you can cut off the main reservoir from the smaller one. Push that down, turn the end cap to lock, and now all the ink in the main reservoir is shut off 
from the little reservoir at the front. That means you can write for several pages without doing anything else. However, it also means that you cannot have any burping from the main reservoir because the shut-off valve prevents it completely. I suppose it's theoretically possible you could have a burp from the small reservoir. However, if you get on a plane, all you have to do is, with the small reservoir full, tip the pen upside down, release the end cap, and all the ink will flow from that into the main reservoir. Shut it off, and now the small reservoir is empty. You cannot have burping in the plane or, in my case, on the coach. Simple, really elegant, fabulous to use. I love that. The other thing is that if, for any reason, the ink dries out, if you haven't used the pen for quite some time or anything, you have the main reservoir full, but you can't get ink to the nib, you turn the pen the right way up and press the cap two or three times, and that pumps just a little bit and forces ink into the nib. Again, beautiful, simple, elegant. I cannot say just how wonderful this pen is to use. I feel enormously privileged and very grateful to Dante for the fact that he's sent this to me. So, how easy is it to fill with ink? Very easy. I'm just going to have to modify my arrangement here though. Hold on one second. And now. Here we have one pen. To fill it with ink, first of all, turn it from the padlock to the unlocked. Pull the rod back. Carefully grip your bottle of ink. You dip the pen up to the section. I'm having to be very careful with this. In fact, I'm going to change hands. Unfortunately, I've got some sort of affliction with my right hand, which means it's very weak now. So I'm just going to dunk it into the ink. As you can see, this is some KWZ Baltic memories. Do the pen into the ink. Press the plunger down, hold it there just for a moment while the ink flows, and you have a very full pen. And there you have it. I know people always expect to have a quick display of writing, so let's get a notebook out. Now, I have been playing with this pen for the last few days, mainly because it is such a joy to use. So let's see, what do I like about this? First of all, I love the appearance. It looks simple. But it is very elegant, especially with that lovely cityscape in the back of the band. I love the massive reservoir. I'm going away next week for another Smithsonian talk. And being away for seven to eight days, that reservoir is going to be just fabulous to use. I do love the simplicity of the twin tank touchdown system. It is a simplified version of the Visconti system and so far I've refilled this pen I think four times and it works faultlessly. It's absolutely wonderful. I adore this nib. Now this is an Hyperflex nib. Dante tells me it's going to cost about 220 euros. It is solid gold, so don't be surprised. The standard pen for about 225 euros will come with a steel nib, which is also partly flexible, but won't be the same as this. I can't speak about that because I haven't tried one. 
All I can say is that knowing Dante, it will be an exceptionally good nib anyway. So, with this pen, I love the clip because it's functional, it works, it holds the pen in my shirt. I love the little band with the cityscape, that just really appeals to me, I don't know why. I love the fact it's a magnetic cap because it's so quick and easy to use it. Anybody who's watched my videos in the past will know I just love magnetic caps. I adore the simplicity of the twin tank system. I really like the fact that it means you can lock off the front reservoir, as you can see it's now empty. All of the ink is in the rear reservoir. If I just do that again, you will see now the front reservoir is full. So simple, so quick and easy, it's just wonderful. And what I do love is the fact that this pen is light and easy for me to hold. Uh, again, viewers of this will know that I've got a problem with my ulnar nerve, which means my um, fine motor actions with my fingers is significantly reduced and strength in them is really damaged. This pen I can use for hours every day and it is just superb to use. Why do I like the Hyperflex? Well, because you can have fine lines, but as you put more stress on the nib, you get fatter lines. So, It is, frankly, superb. Even better when it's in the shop. And there you have it. This is, without a doubt, currently my very favourite pen. Which is surprising. I love the Viscontis, I love the Homo Sapiens, mainly because I really like the clever uh, combination of resin with lava from a volcano. It makes them absolutely bulletproof. They are rock hard. If you put another pen next to them, there is no way the Homo sapiens is going to suffer. The other pen will. But as a pen to carry in my shirt pocket, this is light enough to fit in my shirt pocket without destroying my clothes. I love that filling mechanism, I love the magnetic cap, I really like the clip, it holds it on to, to your pocket really well, and the simplicity of the mechanism and the massive reservoir. I, I cannot get over just how big that reservoir is. It is huge! That makes this easily my most useful pen for carrying around, but also with that Hyperflex nib, it's the nicest pen for writing for long periods because it's so relaxing and easy on the fingers. And with my hand right now, that's important. This is superb. I can thoroughly recommend it. And if you found that interesting, don't forget there's a Patreon link down the bottom and all, all those good things with um, the like button and the subscribe button and the, all those things, you know all about them. So I hope that was interesting. Thanks a lot for watching. I will try to get a video up for next week. I can't guarantee it because I am away with Smithsonian Journeys and it's very likely I won't have time but I will be back in two weeks. Hopefully this will be enough to keep you going but what I may well do is give you an update on what it's like after two weeks use and comparing it perhaps with a dual reservoir Visconti if that's interesting. Right thanks a lot for watching speak to you soon and take care.